I'm so tempted to just dive and go for it. The last thing you want is to get your hand into the mouth of a hundred pound gargantuan prehistoric reptile. The dark swampy waters of Southeast Texas conceal many mysterious predators, but nothing is more impressive than the reptile you are about to witness. Hailing as the largest freshwater turtle in North America, this species is shrouded in folklore, and the stories they spark are famous for igniting a status that is considered legendary. The alligator snapping turtle reigns as the dragon of Texas. I have teamed up with Carl and Viviana of Texas Turtles. This conservation group is on the front lines of protecting our shelled friends. No matter the species, they love turtles. For several days, we have been working under special permits to catch and record this location's resident gator snapper population. Using a safe method known as hoop netting, we have had some incredible success landing a variety of algae-covered swamp monsters. By now we know the famous phrase, everything is bigger in Texas, and the turtles are no exception, which means that some nets simply aren't big enough. And that is where I come into play. Get ready, this episode is about to get wild. Okay, I'm checking a net that is close to the edge right here. I think we've got a turtle, it's moving. This net is moving right here. All right, I'm gonna pull it up and take a look. Oh, no. It was outside of the net. Big turtle right outside of the net. No, there it goes. And now he is back off and into the swamp. That is a very large snap. The water's too deep and too murky. I can't see anything. I'm so tempted to just, just dive and go for it. A dangerous thing about doing something like that is without being able to see which end of the turtle is the front end of the turtle, the last thing you want is to get your hand into the mouth of a hundred pound gargantuan prehistoric reptile. is how you jump in to catch Clark Gargantuan, snapping turtle. Woo if at first you don't catch it with the trap, you wait just a few seconds longer and the turtle will return to the bait all the way underwater. And that is the only way that I have learned to catch snapping turtles. No nets, no traps, no problem. Oh buddy, that is a good turtle right there. My goodness. <laughs> okay, I'm coming up, watch your feet. That is one powerful reptile right there. And a turtle <coughs> with jaws of that size could definitely take off your hand. A second I went underwater, my hand slid down the side of his carapace. I was like, oh, please get to the backside of this turtle and don't let your hand end up in those jaws. Yes, yes, we have ourselves a really good looking alligator snapping turtle. How about that? A little bit of patience is all took and I knew, I knew you were gonna come back for that bait, but you didn't think I'd be waiting, did you? Oh, okay, um, if you can go run and get Carl and Viviana, um, I'll stay here with the turtle. We'll get these biometrics. Yes, yes. And there you have it. 
that is a true prehistoric giant, the alligator snapping turtle, the reptile that we have been searching for and safely trapping with the hoop nets for the past couple days. Now we've caught a couple of smaller turtles, but nothing so far of this size. And truth be told, like I said, during the process of that all unfolding, this turtle wasn't actually quite in the net yet. So jumping into the water to catch it ended up being the right tactic. But the thing about this turtle that makes it so unique is just its prehistoric design. Look at this creature covered in algae, gnarled carapace, and a mouth that certainly means business. Now one of the big differences between the alligator snapping turtle and the common snapping turtle is the reach of that head. And while the skull may be massive and the spread of those jaws incredible, and the power definitely strong enough to take off a finger or crush a hand, it doesn't quite have the reach of the common snapping turtle. So me being this close to this turtle, I don't feel as if I'm in danger in any way, shape, or form. And one of the most fascinating aspects about the alligator snapping turtle is actually the way that it hunts. This is considered an ambush predator as compared to the common snapping turtle, which I would say is much more nomadic. All this reptile needs to do is lay on a body of water and wait for its prey to come to it. If you zoom in on the underside of that jaw there, you can see that little fleshy appendage moving around. It looks just like a worm. Now, this is called lingual luring. The turtle will lay in wait, wiggle that worm, and a fish will get close thinking, oh, look at this, I found an easy meal but it's exactly the opposite. The fish gets close, the snapping turtle clamps down its jaws, and the fish went from potential predator to prey item. At this size, the only threat that a turtle of this magnitude faces is human interaction. The alligator snapping turtle is considered a protected species, which means it is illegal to go out and catch, harass, or interact with these reptiles unless you have the proper permits. However, that doesn't stop people from poaching these reptiles. They're oftentimes traded on the black market in the pet trade, but also the food trade. Believe it or not, this turtle is the origin of turtle soup. So we have to work collectively, all of us, to make sure that the protections stay in place to keep these prehistoric looking reptiles safe safe here on our planet. I absolutely love the carapace of these turtles. Now, as compared to the common snapping turtle, the alligator snapping turtle has these very distinct ridges that run the length of its body. Now, not only do they look cool and they gave them their namesake, the alligator snapping turtle, because when they come to the surface, it almost looks like the back of an alligator, but they have functionality. During storm surge and hurricane season, if the water levels change quickly, this turtle's capable of wedging itself down in between logs. It will essentially lock itself in place to make sure that it does not move from the territory that it is currently protecting. And when you look at it, it's got all this algae and even little worms and leeches crawling around on it. There's an ecosystem existing on the back of this reptile. One thing that I do love about these turtles is their eyes. Look at that, black and gold focused, all those little fleshy little particles of skin growing off of them. And that helps to keep these animals camouflaged underwater. You can see the algae that's growing on that turtle's face. It really looks like a rock when it's laying on the basin of a body of water waiting for its prey to get close. And yeah, looking inside that mouth, that's probably about as close as I wanna get. And you'll notice there's a hole that keeps opening up inside its mouth there. That's actually the way that this turtle breathes. That little hole connects to the roof of its skull, which then connects to its nostrils, and that's how they're able to come up above the water, take a quick breath without opening their mouths. That also helps them when they're in the process of eating, make sure that no water goes down and into their lungs. Okay, I'd say that this turtle's about ready to get back into the water, so it's time to do the important work. I'm gonna bring in Carl and Viviana from Texas Turtles, and we're going to collect the necessary data that they need to make sure that this turtle is properly documented. All right, guys, you ready to pull the biometrics? Let's do it. Catching is fun, but the most important aspect to Carl and Viviana's research is the biometrics. Head width is taken first, followed by carapace and plastron lengths. Next, a pit tag, which stands for passive integrated transponder, is quickly inserted. No, this is not a tracking chip, but instead is an identification tag that can quickly be scanned to ID this turtle if it is caught again in the future. Think of it kind of like a turtle's social security number. Last, but certainly not least, is my favorite part, the turtle's weight. 
This big boy isn't going to set any world records, but it does boast being the biggest turtle we caught on this round of research. 70.3 pounds, yes! That is a good sized turtle, that's for sure. I'll give you a look at the scale there. With the biometrics complete, this turtle is now ready for release. Well, it's officially time to release this prehistoric behemoth back into the wild. But before I do, I just want to give a big thanks to Texas Turtles for allowing us to assist in the important research that they've been doing to help preserve the alligator snapping turtle. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Around the world, turtles are under threat. And as I mentioned earlier, there is no collective species that is considered more endangered than our shell-covered friends. The work Carl and Viviana do through Texas turtles on a year-round basis is not only about collecting data, it's about spreading a message of change and fostering an understanding that turtles play a crucial role in the natural ecosystem. Illegal poaching, black market trade, and habitat destruction are only three of the biggest threats turtles face. And until we get protections in place for all turtle species, they will always be at risk. Brave Wilderness continues to drive a narrative about turtle conservation and why it is so important, but I encourage you to get involved. If you love turtles and want to help, check out the links we suggest in the video description below. Pick one of the turtle conservation groups and make a donation share their site on your social media, or reach out and ask how you can get involved. The world is a better place because of turtles, so let's make sure that as humans, we create a better future for this species. Hey Coyote Pack, if you love turtles, make sure to go back and watch the episode where we worked alongside the World Wildlife Fund to promote the conservation of green sea turtles. And don't forget, Subscribe and join memberships so you can be a part of the pack on our next wild adventure.